Jakarta is a city on the move, a bustling metropolis with a growing population of over 12 million. Eating is a popular pastime in the country. But food should not only be tasty, it needs to be sufficient and safe. E. coli, salmonella and other harmful bacteria can be lurking in food alongside insects and mould. These contaminants can lead to food poisoning and wastage. Indonesia is one of 60 countries worldwide that's improving food safety with irradiation. Research is centred at the National Nuclear Energy Agency, BATAN, which coordinates several IAEA projects. Actually, to irradiate food is not a new, quite new for us because we have been starting for the research in 1969 and then we came to the commercialization in 1992 and it begins with uh, five food items only and now we have 147 food items. The country's commercial irradiation centre, Relion, operates seven days a week, 24 hours a day, irradiating food for domestic and international markets. Irradiation is used to kill harmful bacteria and control insects. The technique extends the shelf life of food by destroying microorganisms, such as mould that causes food to decay. It's an alternative to heating, refrigeration or the use of chemicals as preservatives. The simplest system works like this. Food is loaded into an irradiation chamber. A radioactive cobalt source, which is safely stored deep underwater, is lifted. Gamma rays penetrate the food. After lowering the source, the irradiation stops. The process does not make the food radioactive. One regular customer is Jerak Tane, a family-run spice and sauces company based in Jakarta. By using irradiation, the firm's produce can last for up to a year, compared to one week if untreated, and is cleared of any harmful microorganisms. We use irradiation to control any possible contamination from bacteria that could be found in the raw materials we need for our products. The Yanyi Tofu Company in Bogor is hoping to get a license to irradiate its tofu. Of the 30,000 units of tofu Yan Yi produces a day, around 10% are wasted because they don't stay fresh for long. Irradiation would extend the shelf life of the tofu from one to seven weeks. Tests at Batan show that the irradiated tofu remains fresh for much longer and with no change in taste. The nuclear agency is also using irradiation technology to produce safe food for people with weak immune systems who are more at risk from foodborne infections. Under an IAEA research project, BATAN uses radiation to sterilize meals that not only add variety to the diets of these people, but are also tasty and healthy. This woman is taking part in the project. She was diagnosed with breast cancer in 2007 and has undergone chemotherapy. My immunity body is low, so I want to get uh, to improve it. And I believe this food is better because it's sterile. So the nutrition may, may be the highest condition. Some residents at Indonesia's National Narcotics Rehabilitation Centre in Sukabumi are also beneficiaries of the project. There are people here who suffer from HIV or hepatitis, which has damaged their immune systems. Batan conducted a successful project in 2011 
and is now carrying out tasting tests for the next stage of the project. The main aim of the project was to improve the immune systems of the selected residents. Test results showed that after introducing the irradiated foods into their diet, their nutritional status improved. Indonesia has a wealth of exotic fruits and a high potential for export. But international controls to stop the spread of pests, like fruit flies, can be a hurdle. Entomologists are researching the right amount of radiation to use to control bugs that infest fruit. If the project succeeds, fresh produce will be able to reach new marketplaces and shiploads of fruit could be leaving the Jakarta port in the future, bringing an economic boost to the country and a further benefit of nuclear technology.